to At Home with APS. My name is Miss Martindale, and this is my dear friend, Miss Garcia. Yes. Love your hat. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think about mine? I love those. Hmm. You'll find I out. I what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Look at mine. It's very Mr. cool. Mr. R made it for me. I think those are like, what, are they the tri-fold hats? They used to wear those tri-corner hats way back in the days. They were very popular. Yeah. It's, it's crazy very fashionable. Handy, so get yeah. crazy with this over here. Before we begin, you might want to get some materials ready. Um, anything around the house. You're going to need glue. You're going to need scissors, coloring supplies, any scraps of paper that you might be able to find, your writing journal. And then we're also going to make, I'm going to throw a wrench in your plans. Instead of two column notes, we're going to be making three column notes. And while Ms. Garcia and I are talking, you can look back behind me and that's what your three column notes are going to look like. I am super excited. Three column notes? I think we've got big boys and girls almost <laughs> ready for sixth grade. So three column notes, here we come. Wow, I can't wait to learn how you do those. I'm super excited. Very cool. Shall we introduce our essential question? Sure, I'd love to. So our essential question for today, I'm so excited. It's a really good one. How can we use inferencing when distinguishing between our point of view from that of the narrator or the characteristics. Or the characters. Or the characters, yeah. yes. Or the characters, That's yeah. So you were saying um, that we were going to look, dive deep into illustrations and looking at point of views, but what's up? So, so we are, I, I see where you're going. Mm. So we're gonna read a story today that, that I okay. love. Um, I just love books. I, I keep forgetting, I think as we have been distanced, how much I miss being able to go to the bookstore or the library and just grabbing a book. So we're gonna talk about the importance of illustrations and how a character can view those um, illustrations and have a different point of view or perspective hmm. than ours as the reader. Wow, so point of view. So point of view means that something, this apple may look like an apple to me right here, yeah. but it might be something if you were a small little, let's say an ant, mm -hmm. what would that apple maybe look like to you? To that ant, okay. Or if you were a giant, what would that apple look like? Wow. So um, we are looking at point of view and you said you love stories. I do. What is there a story that you're going to We're going to read a story called Two Bad Ants. Oh. Have you heard of it? I have. I have. Yes. Okay. Super I chose that. this story because the author is also the illustrator. The author is Chris Van Alsberg. Have you heard of him before? Hmm. I, I think so. I think. Uh, so he had, he's written Jumanji oh. and he's written the Polar Express. Oh. The reason I chose this one was because I love his illustrations. And in most of his illustrations, they're just made out of lines. You can see just lines everywhere, which is really cool. So his perspective, the way he's looking at things is through lines, different types of lines. And he also did Polar Express, am I right? Right. Oh, wow. Did okay. I not say that? What did I say? We talked about Jumanji. Oh, okay. I love Jumanji. Yeah. That's really good. And Freaks me out Express. a little bit. Wow. So you mentioned lines, mm -hmm. right? I did. Yeah. And as I remember, you taught me about lines. Yeah, that's lines. right. In our superhero yeah, unit. we learned about lines. We did stretches. And you were telling me how all these different lines can, you know, help me create a story and an idea. Right. Wow. Can I share with share? me your knowledge? Okay. Yes. Um, first, remember, remember Ms. Martindale said we we're going to be doing three column notes and that is something that we're going to be doing but don't forget we still need our two column notes with the vocabulary right good job that we're going to be going into today so our vocabulary today is we are going to dive deep into text feature inference influence character compare and contrast schema perspective opinion, and many more. So whenever you hear us talk about or discuss some of these words and put it into context with our discussions, 
make sure you add a meaning that's important to you that helps you remember what the word means, right? Right. And so that's the that's our vocabulary word, the words that we're focusing on, but you might hear some extra stuff. I bet you will all be saying a lot of these words throughout the lesson. You'll hear Mr. R saying some of them. So jot down what you think the definition is, and we would love for you to share it with us mm -hmm. so that we can see how different or what your perspective is compared to ours. Yeah. So I have a picture for you. Wow, this looks a little familiar. I know, I was so excited when you taught me about lines that I wanted to learn more about lines as well. So this is my friend, Larry, and he's a worm <laughs> because they wiggle, okay. they wiggle through the dirt. So when I was learning with Larry the worm, I learned that he can wiggle vertical. Okay, so verticals up and down. Yes, ma'am. He could also wiggle diagonal. Okay, like a slide. Yes, like a slide. And then he could also wiggle horizontal. Like my bed. Just whew, straight across. Got it. But guess what? He could also wiggle in an angle. Okay, yep, here's an angle got there. it. And he can also spiral and wiggle around into a big old spiral. I love spirals. Those are my favorite. Yeah, and curves. We can't forget about curves when we're drawing our okay. lines. Yeah, so Very these cool. are all important when we're thinking about different lines with our artwork, our drawings creations, building, imagination. Very cool, yeah. I like it. I like those, um, if you even notice on the essential question, I try to use some of those spirals and I just love playing with lines. I love and, that. Um, oh, right here, look, boys and girls. This Martindale has yeah. a spiral. I love it, I love your ants. You're my little ants. <laughs> so, um, so let's jump, I love your vocabulary that you had, and let's, I have some pictures that I wanna show you. Okay. Um, they're kind of freaky pictures. So some illustrations. I, I love them. They're um, to help us learn that your perspective might be different than my perspective, mm -hmm. and that is totally okay. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna show the, the audience out there okay. the picture first, and some of you, I'm gonna put this in the background, have seen this before. Um, what do you see out there in TV land? I know what I see right away. And then I'm gonna show it to Miss Garcia and see what she sees. Are you ready? Okay. What do you see? I don't know, I'm kind of confused. I really don't see anything. Um, I see an old lady. An old lady? That's all I see. I can't picture it being okay. anything else. I see an old lady too. Mm. There is, this is her hair, her bangs. Yeah. This is her nose. And I don't know why I say old. I just figured older because of the... Mm. Well, I like, I can see right here because her nose and it almost looks like she doesn't have any teeth. Yes, she'll be okay. old lady with no teeth. I did I'm sorry. So brush teeth. your teeth out there. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I don't see anything else. So I see... I see a young lady. No. I do. No. So I see the profile, like she's turning away from the camera. Here is her cheek. Oh. This is her chin. This is her hair. There's her eyelash and her nose. And this is a shawl. And this is maybe a necklace that she's wearing. Friends and Miss Martindale, I did not see that. And I'm glad I didn't see it prior because this is uh, real. I did not see that at right. all. Right. <laughs> so is your perspective wrong? No. No. Is mine? No. No. We saw two totally different things and they're both right. I wonder, is there something else that you all see out there? I, I kind of see like things in, in this white hood or I scarf. I really like that you brought that because I was finding it hard to be able to describe what perspective means, like how to put a good meaning for myself when mm -hmm. I was thinking, how do I explain what a perspective is? And here we have two separate perspectives on the same image. I'm okay. super excited right now. I have one more for you. Something. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna show our friends out there first. This one, I could see right away what it was for me. So I'm going to see what you see first, what your perspective okay. is, what your opinion, your point of view is. 
Oh, I forgot to mention, I didn't put my glasses on today, so. Oh, <laughs> and I brought mine. A candlestick holder? Ooh, I see it. Or well, like a goblet So or a what cup? color is it? The cup is white, white. Or, or a candlestick so holder. So she sees what's in the middle, this candlestick holder, maybe even a vase, something yeah. like that. Like a goblet? I see what I see right away That's are good. two profiles. Huh. Two people looking at each other. There is their forehead, their nose, and their mouth right there, too. I didn't see that. Right. I mean, I saw they look like noses at first, but then all of a sudden my eyes went to the candlestick hole. Right. So, Miss Garcia, you are not incorrect, and neither am I. Very cool. I, this is a neat way to learn what a word means and to be descriptive. Correct. At the same time. Right. And to study illustrations. Yes. Super excited. And one of our words is inferencing. So with what she gave me, the picture she showed me, I inferenced, which is I made my best you guess. Inferred, yes. Yeah. And I guessed that it was maybe a candlestick holder. Right. So it's that's almost like a hypothesis. Yeah. Super cool. Right. Very good. So are you ready for me to read a story to you? I am. You know, I'm excited about this book. I've heard so many neat things. And the description that you gave me about the lines I can't wait to even just sit by myself right. and investigate. So if you get a chance, find this book and even online and look at the illustrations in it. Chris Van Alsberg also did the illustrations. While I'm doing reading this book, Ms. Garcia, would you mind working on our three column notes? Sure, I would not mind. And we're, we'll switch places a little bit here. And in our three column notes, let's explain real quick. My first column is my text evidence. And I remember that by saying, in the text I read, I can use quotations. I know we did a lesson on finding text evidence and quoting. So I know that my text evidence is something that is visible in my book. My schema, I did not know what schema meant. Um, so I had to look it up. And it's basically something you already know, something that you've dealt with before from your prior knowledge. Text evidence plus your schema gives you what you can infer, your inference, what you can guess, mm -hmm. a good logical guess. I get it now. So text evidence plus my schema will help me figure out what I'm inferencing. Correct. So this and this helps me with my final right. product or what I'd like to explain to right. you. Right, and it'll all make sense. On the first one, I'll stop. And we'll do some text evidence on something that maybe the ants see as something else. But you right away know, oh, wait, I know what that is. Yeah. So while Ms. Martineau gets comfortable, I want Ooh. you to take your paper, fold it into threes, or maybe draw your three columns. Because remember, we stepped up from the two column notes. We are now doing three column notes. Make sure you don't forget your title. We're making some inferences here. First column, we are going to do text evidence. Second column, our schema. Third column, our inferencing. And what I love the most is how Miss Martindale's notes, she put them in an I can phrase. Ooh. Phrase is one of our words. Very before, good. Or an I can uh, statement. And so what we like to do with our students, just like you kiddos at home, especially you from Mission Avenue, we like to do a lot of I can statements at our school. Mm -hmm. So what she wrote for text evidence, she put, in the text, I read, and then we will put our evidence. And you could even say, I can read, yeah. or oh, I, I did can. read. For schema, she wrote, I already know. So we're using some of our background knowledge, mm -hmm. or maybe something that she says, we're like, oh, I know that. And then we add those two together, and here she put, I can infer. So we're inferencing. Remember, inferencing is we are making an educated guess, a hypothesis mm -hmm. with the information given to us. So that's what's going to go into this column. I am so excited. I am too. This is really cool. I am too. And before we begin, I did um, put some paper clips on my book. I'm going to skip some pages just for time's sake. But if you get a chance to read this on your own, um, you can find out what I missed. And what was the name of the book again? Just in case, because you know Two me. Bad Ants by Chris Van Alsberg. Okay. And they look buddy-buddy. And if you zoom in on the illustrations here, I can see what Miss Garcia had talked about, horizontal lines. They're even in almost a curve. 
and I can see vertical lines in the grass as well. Can't wait to you investigate. Ready? Yes. All right. The news traveled swiftly through the tunnels of the ant world. Mm. A scout had returned with a remarkable discovery, a beautiful sparkling crystal. When the scout presented the crystal to the ant queen, she took a small bite, then quickly ate the entire thing. She deemed it the most delicious food she had ever tasted. Nothing could make her happier than to have more, much more. Mm. The ants understood they were eager to gather more crystals because the queen was the mother of them all. Her happiness made the whole ant nest a happy place. Huh. So, Ms. Garcia, I'm going to flip this book over. And what do you notice about the illustrations? What pops out at you? A gigantic crystal. A gigantic crystal. Yeah. You read about a crystal. Mm -hmm. And so what I found from your evidence and you showed it to me is a crystal. Okay, so maybe we could write a beautiful crystal. Wow, a crystal though, how, how could that be down there? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And that's a good question to ask. Questioning while you're reading is really a, a good skill to have. And so you were just asking that a crystal can't be down there. And ants don't eat crystals, and I don't, said. She right. ate it and it was yummy. Don't so we that. know, yeah. yeah, that ants don't eat rocks. At least I haven't seen ants that eat rocks. Yeah, they don't eat rocks or, or crystals. crystals. Ooh, sorry for the squeaky. So then, Miss Garcia, what can you infer? What can you guess that crystal actually is that well, was so delicious and so yummy that she had to have more? Well, I was thinking salt. Okay, it could be but salt. But she said yummy. Ooh. Or the ants. I don't know if it was a she or he. It, it's the queen. Part. Okay, the queen. But they said she said yummy. So what about what if it was sugar? Like Ooh, a sugar cube. I like that. A sugar huh. crystal. Yeah. yeah. Good inference. So I'm going to say salt or sugar. Okay. And then maybe we'll find out as we read the book. I'm going to go on. Salt or sugar. Okay. It was late in the day when they departed. Long shadows stretched over the entrance to the ant kingdom. One by one, the insects climbed out, following the scout, who had made it clear there were many crystals where the first had been found, but the journey was long and dangerous. And I'm going to show my friends out there that in the plants there are lines, and then there are longer lines, diagonal lines, um, in this illustration on this page. They marched into the woods that surrounded the underground home. Dusk turned into twilight, twilight to night. The path they followed twisted and turned, every bend leading them deeper into the dark forest. Miss Garcia, what do you think? My brain is just, my gears are just moving uh -huh. like crazy. Okay, so from my text evidence from what you read to uh -huh. me, the what I picked up on was a dark forest, like okay. a forest, like a... Somewhere with a bunch of, oh, I'll say a forest. I like not showing you the illustrations right away because then you can get your own perspective or your own point of view. Sorry, the squeaky is hurt. That's okay. So what do um, you already well, know? Well, I already know, but I want our friends at home to fill this part in themselves. Okay. Making a little bit of a challenge. So from what I heard and from what you showed me I figured a dark forest okay so what would be in a forest like okay. what what do we see in a forest okay I see trees okay um and I'll go ahead and fill it in okay, okay. I have tr I see trees I see bushes um but I don't see any bu and bushes in here and none of these trees have trunks either so yeah but I see trees have trunks so right. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. So in my background knowledge, I know that most trees have some sort of trunk. So maybe not. Uh, let's so see. So what could it be instead of a forest? What do we think the ants are actually traveling through? Friends at home, think about it. We think it's a forest and we think it's trees, but trees have trunks. From the illustration and what we have inferenced already, what do you think this forest is? What is it made out of? What do you think? Take a minute, turn and talk maybe to someone else that's there. I'll turn and talk from way back here to Miss Martindale. Martindale, I think it's grass. I think you're right. Okay. 
So we collaborated and we said that our forest is made of grass. grass. I wish my grass were that green. And I'm gonna read while you write. Okay. At the edge of the forest stood a mountain. The ants looked up and could not see its peak. It seemed to reach right to the heavens, but they did not stop. Up the side they climbed, higher and higher. The wind whistled through the cracks of the mountain's face. Okay. Yeah. Their legs grew weak as they struggled upward. At last, they reached the ledge and crawled through a narrow tunnel. Hmm. Oh, stood a mountain. Shall I show you a picture of the mountain that they climbed? So that's what I heard. Okay. I heard mountain. Okay. So that's what is in my brain. That's right. what I visualize as a mountain. So let me see what you have. There's the mountain. Huh. Boys and girls. That mountain has like... It's the red and it has white around it. It looks like bricks to me. It looks like bricks. Friends, what do you think? Do mountains, are they made out of bricks? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so either. So do we all agree, even you at home, that mountains are not made Thumbs of up. from bricks? Thumbs up. All right. All right, thank you. So mountains do not have bricks. I know I went hiking this weekend and there was a path that had bricks but when I was climbing, I did not climb up a whole bunch of bricks. Wow. Stood on a mountain. Mountains don't have bricks. And what does it look like, everybody out there? This is really easy. A brick wall. A brick wall. Yeah. When the ants came out of the tunnel, they found themselves in a strange world. There was no more wind, and most puzzling of all, it seemed that the sky was gone. We don't even have to write this, but let's infer where are they. Let's guess where are they now. The sky is gone? The sky is gone. I don't know. You know okay, I'm not going to tell you. What do you think out there? You see the illustrations. Ms. Garcia doesn't. I can infer where they're at now. I need more information before I make my inference. Okay. <laughs> they crossed smooth, shiny surfaces, then followed the scout up a glassy, curved wall. One by one, the ants climbed down into a sparkling treasure. Sparkling treasure. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep going, Miss Garcia. <gasps> and then I'm going to share with you this okay. because I think just this one goes back to our first, crystal? our very first okay. crystal because right here it gives me a huge clue. Quickly, they each chose a crystal, then turned to start the journey home. There was something about the unnatural place that made the ants nervous. In fact, they left in such a hurry that none of them noticed that the two small ants had stayed behind. Oh, no. Why go back, one asked the other. This place may not feel like a home, but look at all these crystals. You're right, said the other. So the two ants are crystal, ate crystal after crystal until they were so full that they fell asleep. Uh -oh. All right, I'm going to show you the illustration, Miss Garcia, and maybe we can circle whether it is salt or sugar. Okay. Okay, you ready? I am inferencing from the illustration and the perspective that I see that it has AR. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing it's sugar. I think you're right. And plus, I know after eating a bunch of uh, candy bars, I, my tummy kind of <laughs> gets full. Daylight came. The sleeping ants were unaware of changes taking place in their newfound mm. home. A giant silver scoop hovered above them, then plunged deep into the crystals. It shoveled up both ants and crystals and carried them high into the air. Like a spaceship? Maybe. The ants were wide awake when the scoop turned, dropping them from a frightening height. They tumbled through space and fell into a boiling brown lake. Oh, I what do you think know. the boiling brown lake is? Well, my text evidence that I heard you read is going to be a boiling brown lake. Okay. What I think is if they're already with sugar and something scooped them and they fell in the air, I'm thinking that maybe it's something that they're being dropped into something we drink. Okay. Okay. 
And this is hot, right? Did they? Right. Was that a it word did that say you boiling. boiling. I didn't say hot. I said boiling brown lake. So I will say boiling brown lake. And then I like your schema that something that's boiling and brown from our perspective might be something hot that we drink, where they see it from their perspective as a boiling brown lake. I wonder what it could be. I already have an idea. Okay, so let me finish reading okay. and then let's, let's see what you can come up with. What do you all think out there? What could this picture be? Then the giant scoop stirred violently back and forth. Crushing waves fell over the ants. They paddled hard to keep their tiny heads above the water, but the scoop kept spinning the hot brown liquid. Around and around it went, creating a whirlpool that sucked the ants deeper and deeper. They both held their breath and finally bobbed to the surface, gasping for air and spitting mouthfuls of the terrible, bitter water. Okay, Ms. Garcia, I see a thumbs up. What I know do you think? exactly what it is because I agree with her. Okay. Because I think it's gross. Oh, and I, I love think it. it's bitter. I love it. And the it. water is icky. I would say it was coffee because I don't drink coffee because okay. it's ew. Or tea. So that has to be what they're what they have fallen in. Okay. So I agree with their, their okay. description also. And then I'm gonna show you this illustration, Miss Garcia, because it's hilarious. And they use he uses tiny lines and he also has incorporated some dots. Okay. Ready for this. <laughs> In that That's a lip. very silly picture. Yes. It is coffee, I bet. Then the lake tilted and began to empty into a cave. Huh. I wonder what a that cave. cave was. Huh. We'll let, we'll let you figure it out out there. The ants could hear the rushing water and felt themselves pulled toward the pitch black hole. Suddenly the cave disappeared and the lake became calm. The ants swam to the shore and found that the lake had steep sides. They hurried down the walls that held back the lake. Close by, they found a huge round disc with holes that could neatly hide them. Huh. This one's a good one. Okay. But as soon as they had climbed inside, their hiding place was lifted, tilted, and lowered into a dark space. When the ants climbed out of the holes, they were surrounded by a strange red glow. It seemed to them that every second the temperature was rising. Huh. I'm going to add that for okay. my text evidence. What I are like you adding? This. I am adding a strange red glow. Okay. And for my schema, when I think of something red or glowy, mm -hmm. especially, I think that they're in the kitchen already, so it has Very to be good. hot. So you think... Hot. Red is hot. Right. Yeah. I like it. I'm going to keep reading and then maybe we can make some uh, an inference. It soon became so unbearably hot that they thought they would soon be cooked. But suddenly the disc that they were standing on rocketed upward and the two hot ants went flying through the air. What do you think? I'm not going to show you. Well, when I take my text evidence plus my schema. I inference that it's a microwave or an oven or an oven toaster because they said cook, they said hot, they said red glow. Very good. All that stuff. I think that so you are correct. I'm going to write that. I even thought it was a microwave at first. I but think then microwaves microwave. don't really have a red glow oh, to them. You're right. They landed near what seemed to be a fountain, a waterfall mm -hmm. pouring from a silver tube. Both ants had a powerful thirst and longed to dip their feverish heads into the refreshing water. They quickly climbed along the tube. As they got closer to the rushing water, the ants felt a cool spray. Hmm. What do you think that cool spray was? Mint, the, uh, I have no idea. You have no idea? Steam? A waterfall pouring from Steam? a silver tube. Oh, sink? Maybe. Hmm. The tiny insects were pulled off the fountain and plunged down into a wet, dark chamber. The chamber began to spin. The ants were caught in a whirlwind whirling storm of shredded food and stinging rain. Then, just as quickly as it had started, the noise and spinning stopped. 
Bruised and dizzy, the ants climbed out of the chamber. Oh, good. I'm just doing it as you read. Good. So what do you think that crazy spinning thing was? Uh, the, well, now that I know that they're in the kitchen, I was thinking that they were by the sink. So maybe the spinny thing was like the garbage disposal? I think so. Okay. Night had returned when the battered ants awoke to a familiar sound. The footsteps of their fellow insects returning for more crystals. They climbed the glassy wall and once again stood amid the treasure. But this time, they each chose a single crystal and followed their friends home. Standing at the edge of their ant hole, the two ants listened to the joyful sounds that came from below. They knew how grateful their mother queen would be when they gave her their crystals. This was their home. This was their family. This was where they were meant to be. The oh. end. They went on an adventure, didn't they? did, they? and they were glad to find each other and their families. You know what? All of this, you know, all this text evidence, the schema, the inferencing, the illustrations you were showing me, um, getting my perspective on things. Uh -huh. ah, it has my mind just going into all these different directions, and I want to continue with the lines, and what oh. if we were ants, and what if <gasps> we were on an adventure? Oh, that would be cool. Do you know how fun that would be? We could make something, like... A STEM activity. Remember, Ms. Martindale was teaching us, especially me, all of us, that all of our language arts activities, right. all of our books and stories that we read, and all of our creations that we write, it kind of is a pathway and a bridge into everything, into STEM, into science, technology, right. math, history, social studies. It all goes together. I want to be an ant. Okay. And I think we need to get our very best builder and maker to help build something. Okay. I want to see what you and Mr. R can create. Okay. Yeah, All can right. you please build. I want to pretend I'm an ant and I want to go somewhere amazing. Will you okay. do that for me? Yes, so oh. Mr. R might come up. I think we're gonna go look for him. Everybody out there, make sure you have your glue ready, some scraps of paper. Oh, they're gonna make something for me too? Yes, you guys should be, you guys and gals should be building something as well. Um, so get your things ready, your supplies ready, and here comes Mr. R. Hey there, my favorite families. This is Mr. R, and it is crazy hat day, and hopefully my hat stays on longer than Miss Garcia's. Um, I am so excited that I get to tinker and build with you guys. Uh, that's a neat story that really forced my own perspective on how to kind of look at things. You know, it's funny is when Miss Martindale was sharing this book with us, I thought she meant like the author's perspective, and I couldn't quite make sense of what exactly it was. And I found more stories that looked at author's perspective. And then she said, no, Mr. R, you have the wrong perspective. It's the ant's perspective that we're looking at. And then it made sense. Anyway, so there goes the hat. This, uh, so we're gonna build today. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna collect some items from home. Uh, I personally went through my house to look for items that I could use that were uh, either not being used or that I could repurpose. And the best part about it, recycle. So a uh, couple things I'm gonna share with you. First, I went into a uh, educational dump ground uh, where teachers can dispose of things that they're not using, but that other teachers can look for and use. And I found this beautiful landscape that was used by one of our younger grades. We just want to look at this. You could see on there, there's some fake grass they made and some pine needles and rocks. And if I turn it this way, there's uh, a dragonfly and a bird. It looks like a hawk. And when I saw this, I thought of that perspective that Miss Garcia and Miss Martindale were talking about. And I thought, you know, this, from this perspective, would make a great place for an ant to be. We have the brown ground, the tall grass, and then since we're looking at uh, building a playground from an ant's perspective, why not build it on the ground? So 
I have this material, which I recycled, that another teacher did not need anymore. I brought my glue gun, which I'm very good about burning myself with. Um, but I brought it, and I don't think it's turned on. It is not. I should turn it on now so it's warming up. You at home, if you have a glue gun, you're more than welcome to use it. I'm going to highly, highly suggest you don't because stick glue, Elmer's glue, um, those work just as well. Uh, they just take a little bit longer to dry, but they're safer. Uh, next thing I have are some, what is this? Oh, this is tin foil. Right here you can see. And I found some wooden dowel sticks. And oh, look what just appeared here. Glue sticks. So I highly suggest to use these because uh, if you get enough of them, they stick just as well as hot glue. And they're safer. And the next thing I need is, uh, so, or next thing I found are some popsicle sticks, some paper plates, and I was thinking about, even if you don't have all these things, most people have paper. So we cut some various uh, strips of paper. Now what's neat about the paper, and I wanna point out, Miss Garcia's Wiggly Worm, Willie the Worm, I don't remember, is, with the paper, you can make the same lines that she did, and that which appeared in uh, the story as well. So I think I'll start with some strips of paper. So here's a red one, here's a green one. I'm feeling, let's stick with the red one. So what's really important about these red strips of paper, which Right now is in a straight line, vertical, and it could go diagonal or horizontal, is when we glue them to the, um, our, our scenery here for our playground, we need to make sure to make little feet. So to make little feet, you just fold over just a tiny foot of the paper. And the way I envision this going is, ooh, I can make a spiral. And so I would take my paper and I would, and it looks like I'm gonna need another little foot, so I'm gonna do a foot right here. And I'm gonna get some of this fancy glue stick here. And I'm gonna put glue on one foot. And I'm going to go to the other foot, and I'm going to put some more glue. All right. And then I'm going to make my swirl, and I'm going to put one foot and press it down really hard. Somebody's banging things. And I'm going to push this foot down really hard. Now, I'm going to hold this up so you can see. There is my swirl. Now, thinking about this from an ant's perspective, I'm gonna look down at it and this could be a couple of things. It could be a curly slide. It could be a hideout. If I was an ant who rode a skateboard, I would want to ride the skateboard on this curly pipe thingy. Oh. Now, what else can I do with these strips of paper? Well, one of my favorite things to play on at the playground at our school is a jungle gym. And what I'm thinking is most jungle gyms have that half moon shape. Look at that. And, oh my gosh, this is like geometry. Yeah, because in geometry you have these shapes that are appearing. Oh my gosh. Do you know life without geometry is pointless? <laughs> Best joke ever. All right, so I'm gonna make an arch and hopefully I got my feet just right. And I spilled some glue, 
glue stick spill. And I'm going to make an arch right over my curly slide here. It's very abstract. I'm going to press those feet down nice and hard so they hold. And look, my ants and their uncles can go from the grass in onto the arch here, which could be a monkey bar or a bridge, and they could play in this curly slide all while the hawk watches. All right, let's do something adventurous. So I have these plates here. And when I look at these plates, they're round. What's really interesting about round plates is I'm going to try and envision what sort of playground equipment is round. Ooh. Merry-go-rounds. Merry-go-rounds are round. Oh. You know what's even cooler than a merry-go-round now? A Ferris wheel. I wonder if I can make a Ferris wheel out of these plates. These are really big plates. I have some smaller plates right here. Okay. I think I'm going to use two plates. And if I put them together, that could be like my Ferris wheel. So what, how will I do this? Ooh, I know. Let's see if my glue gun's ready. Nope. It is not hot enough yet, but that's okay. I have my handy dandy safe to use glue stick. And I'm going to put some on the bottom of the plate, of one plate. I'm going to take my other plate and I'll show you how I'm doing a swirl just like the lines in Miss Garcia's poster. Well, it's not a swirl, it's a spiral. I'm going to do another one just to make sure I have enough glue. That silly worm. And then I'm going to stick these two plates together. There we go. Put the glue stick cap back on so it doesn't dry out. And now there's the wheel of my Ferris wheel. Now I'm going to have to think very carefully about how to put an axle through there for it to spin on. Now I have these wooden dowels. And I bet you, if I pushed really hard, I can push it through. An alternative, I could use a pair of scissors. I think I'll use a pencil, just a little bit safer. Now, you want to be careful with your fingers here so you don't poke through. Uh, and we're just going to push down all right, here. And it made a little hole. And I'm going to widen it up with my pencil. Well, I didn't even check to see and make sure it was in the middle. It's OK. This is just for fun. And I'm going to stick that wooden dowel through. And look, my Ferris wheel wheel is already spinning. Now, alternatively, if you don't have a wooden dowel, so I used a pencil. You could use a stick from outside. You could use your finger and just hold it there as long as you want it. Since I have the dowel, I'm going to use that. That bell's really long. It's going to break it. All right. So now I have an axle for my wheel to spin on. And now I just need to make a stand. For this, I might use these popsicle sticks. And hopefully, my glue gun is warm enough. To find out, I'm just going to put a little glue. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now again, I could use the glue stick. I just have to wait a little bit while it dries. But considering we're thinking about time, I'm going to use this hot glue gun. And I put two of these popsicle sticks together to make an A-frame out of two diagonal lines. I keep running over my hat that dropped off my head. I'm just going to put it over here with another hat that doesn't fit. So I have two diagonal lines, and I'm going to stand those up. There's one part of the frame for my ferris wheel 
And now I'm going to get two more popsicle sticks. And I'm going to put them in an A-frame. And I want it to be identical to the one I just made. So I'm going to line it up about right there. Oops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one over the other, put a small dab of glue away from my fingers because this glue gun is 500 degrees. And then I'm going to line up the second popsicle stick and align them with the one on the bottom, which is already dried. And there are two A-frames, one M-frame, or the stand for my Ferris wheel. Now, these are already dry. They've already cooled down. And I think I'm ready to attach them to my Ferris wheel. Now this is going to be tricky. I think the best way to go about this, already made a mess, is to, I think I'm going to take the wheel off the axle. And I th what I'll do is I'll just put a dab of glue ooh, right on the bottom of the stick there. And I'll stick that wooden dowel right in there. And now I have to hold it. Now, even this doesn't dry or cool down fast enough. So I'm going to give it a little blow. And there we go. I'll hold this up so you can see that it is axle. Now, I want you to think back a couple uh, a while ago when we met, we talked about the design process. And in the design process, you have to imagine, create, plan. What I'm doing right now is I know what a Ferris wheel looks like, and I know I need to imagine what it could look like from an ant's perspective, which is what allowed me to make sense of this Ferris wheel. So that's part of that design process. Now, I've had a lot of experience making things out of recycled material. I'm going to use scissors just to kind of straighten this out. So I kind of am able to quickly do this. You may or may not have that same experience. So I highly, highly suggest, highly, that you just start doing it. Make messes, make mistakes, so that when you're in front of a camera, it'll all look natural. So I'm ready to attach this part of the frame to my other part of the frame. Now this is gonna be the tricky part because I need the wheel to be in there on the axle while I do this. And I need to hold it against the other part of the frame. I'm thinking the best way to do this would be just like I did before. Take my glue, put a little dab right on the top part of the A-frame, and then hold the plate, or hold my wheel, the axle, and the other part there. Give a little blow. And while that dries, I can already think and envision the perspective, pers per perspective an ant would have when they see this Ferris wheel. When I go to the fair here in Albuquerque, New Mexico at our state fairgrounds, they have Ferris wheels there and they are so big. They are some of the tallest structures. We don't have a whole lot of tall structures here in New Mexico. So to see something that big is mesmerizing. Is that? It's getting there. I'm just going to leave that there and let it dry a little bit more. It's kind of holding up. So now I can think about while this dries, what other structures can I make? I know. 
if I'm an ant and I'm looking at a playground or a place to explore and I see these curly slides, these arches, these giant wheels, something else I need to think about, which I always have a lot of fun on, are slides. Now, I can use strips of paper to easily make a slide. What I might do, oh, I have this ruler. It's a little bit more stiff. What I can do is I can glue these two wooden dowels here to the ruler. So I'm gonna move my Ferris wheel, which is just about dried. Oh, look at that. There's my Ferris wheel. I'm gonna take this ruler, lay it down, and take my first dowel, hold it up. Oh, put a dab of glue, hold it up. Oh. And more waiting and drying, give it a little blow. And this is gonna be the vertical leg of my slide. And what I'll need is another vertical leg, which I'm gonna have to wait until this is done drying. Now, something I need to think about while this is drying is what every um, ladder needs are, uh, to a slide are steps. And so I need to think about what I can use as steps. Now, some playing cards. This wooden dowel would be way too big. Could use strips of paper. I wonder what you would use. I've got paper clips. That would be perfect. So there's one leg standing up. Now I'm gonna get this other leg ready and I want you at home. That is way too much glue. At least it's on the ruler and not my finger. All right. I'll hold that there and give it another little blow. One. <clears throat> now, while this we're waiting for this to dry, I want you to think about at home what you could build a little playground with. And though I wouldn't encourage you to go find ants and stick them on the playground you built because they bite and they sting and some people are allergic to them, um, it would you encourage you to think about the perspective. Imagine yourself as a giant looking down at the playground at your school. What would it look like? Would it look anything like our playground here? Is that dry yet? Oh, that's so exciting. It's not dry. It's falling over. <laughs> so um, something at your school that you can think about building, which I am going to attempt to since we have enough time, is a swing set. Now, what would I need for a swing set? I could use these strips of paper. I could build another frame with diagonal lines, just like I did for the Ferris wheel. I wonder if I have any string. I'm gonna have to look. Meanwhile, my slide is just about ready. Those legs might be too tall, but that's okay. I'll just take these scissors and cut them in half. Nope, that's not happening. I'm totally just breaking it. That's okay. It's what we call a happy accident. Because if it was a sad accident, I would be crying. But I don't cry over spilled milk, just hot glue on my finger. All right. That looks a lot better. I'm going to have to fix that leg. All right. Um, I am running out of time, and I don't see that glue, that swing set being built. 
But I want to thank you for joining us at home with APS. And I want to encourage you to find a way to send me your playgrounds for ants and tell me about the perspective you envision them from. Oh no, it's all broken. Goodbye, friends. <laughs>